today I made $450 building multiple self-watering raised garden beds that are perfect for places that don't have water access. You want to know how I did it? Follow me and lass uns anfangen. I've been hearing about the self-watering raised garden bed that Costco sells. So I checked it out and I noticed it's the same concept that I've been building my self-watering garden beds with for years now. But this one is $199. So no, I can't build this cheaper. I wanted to invest as little money as possible. So I looked around the farm to see what items can be recycled for this project and I found a bunch of old lumber. I also found pond liner, water pipes and drainage pipe that I will need for a later step. Then I went to Home Depot to purchase fence pickets that were $2.87 a piece. I needed 7 of them per box which made it $20.09 before taxes. I started by cutting off the dog ears of the fence pickets and then cut them to size. With the spring season being here, people start to garden and there seems to be a market for it. So I want to give it a try and see if I can build some and sell them. I'm sure you will ask. Of course I was honest about the recycled materials that I used in the build. People seem to love it even more for that reason. The lumber I used was very weathered looking since it's been laying around on the property for quite some while. I know people pay money to have items look weathered, but I wanted to have a newer look. So I ran all the items through the planet to uncover the true beauty of the pieces. And these are all the pieces that I need to assemble the garden planter. In the next step it was time to drill some pocket holes. Lots of them. Lots of them. Lots of them. Yeah, like a lot. Like never ending. Not my favorite thing to do. Once I drilled all holes for the base, I started to assemble it. Here I need wood glue and pocket hole screws. I feel wood glue is like salt and pepper. It's one of those staple items that I don't count towards the total of a build. It's just always on hand. Now for the screws, I purchased a large 300 pack for $27.99. I used 16 screws for the assemble of the base, making it $1.49 for this. For the stain I used Olympic Water Guard from Home Depot. It was $28.78 for one gallon. I'm not really sure how much stain I used for this project, but it was just to stain the base, so I just guess it was maybe $3 worth of stain. Before I assembled the box, I ran all those pieces through the planer as well. And then it was time to drill pocket holes, yet again. For the assemble of the box, besides the glue, I used 60 pocket hole screws, making it 560 per box. When you screw together pieces using pocket hole screws, either apply a lot of pressure or use clamps to not have the screws move the lumber the last minute. I added pocket holes not only on the sides, but also between the horizontal rows to keep all the layers tightly together. Easier to pre-assemble all four sides individually first and then screw them together. I did the same for the rest of the sides to get a rectangular box. This box I placed on top of the base. Then I used screws to screw the box to the base. Before you do that, make sure the box is lined up perfectly. When you screw the screws through the base into the box, make sure you center the screws into the box because you don't want the screws to come out on the sides. I used 6 3 inch exterior screws that were 852 for 73 screws in the box, making it 70 cents for this build. Once everything is attached, put in the floorboards. 
and the garden box planter is ready assembled. At this point, if you don't want it to be a self-watering planter, you can just drill some drainage holes into the bottom and you have a regular planter. However, I want it to be self-watering, so there's a few more steps I have to take. Here I'm rolling in my second planter. I build a total of six planters. Two of them I will keep and four of them I will sell. The farm has a lot of pond liner laying around. I will use this to line the planter boxes, since I will need a watertight reservoir. And of course, every time I move things, I have to look underneath it first. And here's another black racer. You know what they call black racer? That's why. Look at it take off. The liner I'm using is super thick. To get it into the box, it's easiest to pre-fold it to the size of the bottom of the box, then slide it into the box and unfold it inside. To hold the liner in place, I'm using staples. Those staples I'm not counting towards the total of the box. I'm sure it's just a few cent for each box. To fill up the reservoir, I need a perforated drainage pipe. I found some solid pipe on the property and used a knife to add the holes to it. Then I taped off the ends. I'm doing this to keep the stones I will add in the next step from filling up the inside of the pipes. To fill the reservoir with water, I used a piece of old water pipe that I slid into the opening of the drainage pipe. Then I used more drainage pipe to fill up the bottom as much as I could and then I added the stones. As for the stones, I live in Florida and there's like literally no stones to be found on my property. So I had to go to Home Depot and purchase those. Each planter box needed three bags of stones. I purchased the red lava landscape rocks. They were $5.82 a bag, making it $17.46 before tax. Now the reservoir needed a drain. I found a piece of irrigation pipe that I cut to length to use for this purpose. I drilled a hole into the box to slide in the pipe. Then I used pond liner tape to tape in the inside to make it watertight. I covered the reservoir with landscaping fabric to keep the soil from filling in the gaps. Then I added a layer of coconut core before I added the rest of the soil. Then it's time to fill the boxes with the plants of your choice. For the finish, I'm using linseed oil. I purchased a gallon of the oil for $39.81 from Amazon. I used about 18 oz, making it about $5.60 for the finish. And we are fair to it. What a fun project to build. Now it was time to list the additional planters I built on an online marketplace. My four planters sold within 24 hours, each cost me about $54 and two cents to build. The planters are much bigger and cheaper than the one listed on Costco. I sold each planter for $155, making a profit of roughly $100 of each planter. Now you might wonder, I'm still $50 short. Well, one customer liked the planter so much and the fact that I'm recycling material from the farm instead of throwing it into the landfill, she wanted to support me with an extra $50 tip. So I came in in a grand total of $450. It was a lot of work to get all the planters finished in one day, but I also kept two of them for myself. And the best part is that I can use those boxes for years to come to harvest vegetables year after year. Thank you so much for watching. If you like, follow me on my Patreon for more exclusive content. This helps me to keep my YouTube channel going. See you next Friday. Tschüss!